All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here on the range, and I have the one and only. This is the Strike Industries build, as you can see right here. Uh, I've taken the liberty of going ahead and running a couple rounds to it, probably about 50 rounds. We probably need to push maybe another 150, 200 rounds in there before we really start dedicating ourselves to nailing it down. But I zeroed it with this guy right here. This is the Silver Line with the ACSS HUD DMR set up for the 5.56 by my boys over there at Primary Arms. So here's the goal. One of the things we're gonna do, we know I know it runs, it functions quite nicely. Um, secondly, uh, I've got it actually zeroed at 50 yards because that's the, with the, and I'm setting this up for the 77 grain. But what we wanna do <laughs> here is I want to go ahead and show, let's see what it'll do at 100 yards accuracy wise. And we're going to go ahead and run the uh, Magtech 77 grain through it. I'm also going to run the uh, Federal 55 grain 556, and then we're going to do some 62 grain green tips and see how that goes. I've got a camera set up down range. The 100 yard target has three one inch dot, three one inch dots. Then what we're planning on doing is I'm going to see how well this thing mates up with the ACSS reticle. We're going to go ahead and set up some 10 inch steels all the way up to 600 yards and uh, see how she works. And then I'm going to put the tech can on the scope so you guys can see firsthand what it looks like through the scope. So let's go ahead and do this. First thing I'm going to do is 55 grain. And like I said, this thing is zeroed for 50 yards plus one quarter. For some reason, I like doing that. Now I'm going to run six. We're going to put one into dirt, put five on the top deal. Let me get my ears on. And as of right now, man, I tell you what, I'm really impressed with how the uh, the whole thing as a package works. The Timmy trigger. I know that uh, one of the guys had an issue with his. Uh, scar but so far so no problems uh no light primer strikes i'm probably never going to run any kind of steel case through this or russian ammo through this particular rifle so i'm not really concerned about if it's a full strength hammer pin i will tell you the ejection pattern using that uh strike industries adjustable buffer uh system i'm getting it right at about exactly three o'clock on the ejection pattern the uh 77 grain shot very very well so without further ado, -do, let's go ahead and pop three rounds at the 100 yard target. Let me get set up here. Guys, I'm using the Caldwell Precision Turret. Uh, this thing is pretty cool in that uh, it just, it makes zeroing a rifle and checking for pure accuracy very, very simple. The only difference is with the, the rear stock being so uh, minimal here, I am not able to, well, maybe I can do it with this guy. I like to always put a bag on the back of it, even steel. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be too high. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up for the 100 yard. All right, top one inch dot. Here we go. I'm going to shoot one round in the dirt. Okay, now we are going to see how the 55 grain groups. Okay, well, it does not like that 55 grain, and, and when I zeroed it, it, uh, it really didn't. Uh, I knew this coming. So we're gonna go ahead and put the 62 grain in here, and we will shoot at that middle dot. Here we go, the middle dot. First one in the dirt. Second one, here we go. Well, 
Wow. She was stringing them up. Kind of interesting. All right, so one of the rounds that I use for competition and precision shooting is this uh, 77 grain MagTech. Uh, as a matter of economics, it's probably one of the best 77 grain Mark 262 clones out there uh, when you can find it. I've, uh, you can pick up a box of these for 50 for like $29. All right, here we go. Bottom target. I hope it shoots better than it did on these other ones. <laughs> Uh, I forgot to put that one in the dirt. Uh, I forgot to put that one in the dirt. And that's the difference between shooting a 77 grain, 62 grain, and a 55 grain. That, without the flyer that I had at the very beginning, is sub in my way. And that's with less than 100 rounds to this barrel. So far, all together, as a system, I love the way the rifle works and performs. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put the tactic cam on. We're going to run some targets up to the 600 and uh, let's see how well it mates up with that ACSS reticle. Be a lot more fun than just a regular old rifle review range stuff. Here we go. Stand by. All right, guys, here we are, man. We've got the tech cam all set up on the camera. Now, one of the things that I like to do is go ahead and re-zero my rifle after I've got the tech cam on there because I just want to make sure we're not wasting ammo by shooting out there. Now, we've got some bad weather coming in. We are losing light. I cannot wait for summertime. But I've got targets set up, 10-inch steel, set up from 200 to 300, 400, and 500. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to illustrate to you guys, one, let's check out the accuracy of this guy and see if she's on. Number two, I want to give you a good little showing of what the uh, tech cam is all about. Now, I'm going to re-zero at 50 yards. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to be shooting the 77 grain. Uh, mag tech. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to go ahead and load up a full magazine of these things. We've got a little breeze coming in from our rear direction. Hopefully that doesn't mess us up. I Out to 500, it really shouldn't uh, bother us. But this is, again, like I said, the famed ACSS reticle. And uh, this, I'm going to show you some really interesting things. One is, is the uh, integral circles that are included with the reticle. And that's one of the reasons why I purchased uh, or was sent or requested from the guys over there at uh, primotargets.com. <laughs> the primo targets at 10 inches. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and re-zero and uh, confirm. And you'll be able to see everything that's going on with the tactic cam. This is some pretty cool stuff. So I'll go ahead and I will bring it down to our 50 yard. And this is the uh, target that I use to bring this whole thing in on uh, target. We'll go ahead and adjust our parallax. There we go. I'm going to go over that bottom center target right there. Ah. I'd say we're dead nuts. <laughs> All right. As you all know, the 50 yard zero pretty matches pretty much matches up really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and bring this thing all the way down with the 200 yard zero, minus a couple inches here or there. All right, let's go ahead. We got a camera out there, so here we go. Pop that center point right there one more time. Huh, we're drifting left. All right, so I might want to hold right shoulder on the 300. Let's see here. But watch this. Okay, so 300, what I want to do is I'm going to take that top post and I'm going to put it right on there. I want to see if we're drifting. Now we're pretty good. Let's do that one more time. 
Not bad, not bad at all. So here's the thing. You see that circle dot? That's your ranging circle. That's 10 inches at 300 yards. How about that? Isn't that cool? All right, let's see about 400 yards. I'm gonna drop this thing down the right direction. We'll be all right. And I got that guy sitting up there with the twins right there. I want to show you something real quick. This is interesting. You see the 10 inch circle? Doom. Right there. So if that lines up perfectly, I know I'm at 400 yards. And one of the things I want to do. Hmm. There we go. All right, I got a whole left shoulder. We evidently have a little bit of a uh, crosswind up there. That's going to be more evident when we go up to five. There's my 500. Now, I'm out here at the Mifflin County Sportsman's Association. Probably the greatest place on earth. Let's see. Now, here's again. There's five. Yeah, there's 10 inches at 500 yards. Let's hold left shoulder. There it is. Yeah, we're hanging. I'm going to drop it back down to 200. Let's have some fun. Now, one of the cool things is this guy does incorporate the Timmy trigger. Where are you at, 200? There you are. And the Timmy trigger, this thing's right at, a little bit right at two pounds. And I'll tell you what, man. How much fun is that? Here we go. Watch this. That's fun. All right, let's see how close the 55 grail, I'm not gonna try that. But anyway, guys, uh, yeah, Strike Industries, this is a really cool design. I'm uh, digging it. Let's see if we can poke it over here. Uh, and I'm having fun shooting it. Uh, I say with a couple days behind the wheel, uh, it would probably suit me well as a DMR rifle or even a three gun. The handguard on it, it's really, really cool. So, anyway, that's it. Strike Industries. Uh, good setup. The, uh, like I said, the buffer's working real good. As a matter of fact, while you're here, because this is fun, let's see how. That buffer held up. A lot of people are talking about maybe it could come loose. Nope. Nope. It's not loose. I'm going to give it that. Punched about 200 rounds today thus far. A lot of fun. And also, you get to see how that ACSS reticle worked. We're going to probably throw this thing on the Apollo reticle for the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor chambered in 140 grain 6.5. <laughs> And I want to show you guys how you can take it from uh, 100 to 1,000 yards. i got to get some new cameras. They keep blowing up on me for some reason. Coda Boy 32, that's it. Strike Industries uh, range review. As far as dependability, I don't see a reason why it won't go. That Air Precision Bolt Carrier Group is doing a great job. All right, well, that's it. With that being said, God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. I'm talking about those guys and those gals out there who are fighting for our constitutional right. And we're going to be talking about Michigan here in a few minutes. Let's go to Boy32. Oh, if you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe. All that neat jazz. I'm out of here.